BBC Radio Berkshire with Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Now, my next guest has a pretty strange claim to fame. Sarah Goddard from Reading has cut the silhouette of several celebrities and her career has meant she's rubbed shoulders with the rich, famous and even royalty. She's capable of cutting silhouettes within seconds. So how do you become a silhouette cutter? Well, she's here to tell me. Right, Sarah, for anybody who is thinking, what on earth are they talking about Try and explain, it's so hard on radio, what it is that you do. Um, I basically get a pair of scissors and some paper, which is black, but um, I fold it in half, so I actually cut on the white side. And I, um, it takes me about maybe a minute. I just follow the contour of the face, with um, obviously on the paper. No, <laughs> with, with, not in real life. No. That, would, that would not be a career. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> and um, yeah, I just snip, snip, snip. And then I place the miniature paper profile on a mount card. Um, it's very reminiscent of the 18th century kind of cameos, the lovely... On brooches that you kind yeah, of think of. Um, very detailed in paper. <laughs> this is a crazy job. I love it. <laughs> there are very few people who do this, aren't there? There are very few people. Um, I, I know them all because... Um, it's got such a small community of us, really. And um, we often pass each other work and things as well. So it's always good. So you kind of say, I can't do this gig. Mm. Would you like the work? Yeah. Or, or they, they might want two silhouette artists if it's a really large function. So we tend to kind of help each other out there. I guess the first question has to be, how on earth <laughs> did you end up doing this as a job? I mean, are your parents silhouette artists? No. No. I mean, like... Some artists get taught by family members and pass it down. I, I certainly pass it down to my family. But um, I actually was very lucky. And I think a lot of things in life are fate. And after I studied at university, I did an art degree. It, we did everything. It was just ridiculous how much stuff we did. And so I you left did sculpture. Yeah. And you did painting animation. And, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Really everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my main path was always illustration. I always did lots of drawing of people. I did lots of collage work. Mm. And afterwards, I was like, I don't know what to do. So I went back home to Reading and um, kind of stayed here. <laughs> um, the lady. Um, that actually I, I ended up meeting, which is why I say it's down to fate, was um, through my now husband. Oh. Um, it was his mother who told me about um, this lady who wanted maternity cover for her shop in Henley upon Thames. And um, I thought, okay, well, I'll do that. It's all art related. She had a beautiful shop full of lovely artifacts. Kind and of objet d'art, that oh, kind yeah, of thing. It's, it's gorgeous, darling. <laughs> um, but what was really amazing was all these silhouettes i'd kind of seen them but i've never really seen them before mm. you know you always seem to catch a glimpse of a silhouette if it's in a film like a period drama or but to see all these in a room it was just amazing they're all intricate full-length ones what they call conversation pieces where there's several in one frame um famous people and i was like how are these done and she said well actually i did quite a few of them and uh, so she did one of me, and I did one of her, and then she said I was a natural. So she said that I should join them and at a party and do it. And uh, that was it? That was it, really, yeah. <laughs> that was how you started? Yeah. <laughs> when you sort of, she said, right then, have a go. So she mm. obviously did one with the, of you, and you thought that's pretty impressive. Yeah. You must have thought, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to be any good at this. I did kind of think that, but I kind of knew that I had the art background behind me, and... Actually, my first set I really like, but the second one wasn't so good. And then the third one was a little bit better. And over the years, I, my style's developed. I've got a lot quicker, a lot faster. I put more detail in. I like doing glasses and fascinators at weddings and um, carrying champagne flutes and do couples together. And, yeah, the lists are endless of what you can do with uh, silhouettes, actually. Absolutely <laughs> fascinating. I cannot wait to find out more about you. More to come from Sarah, but first of all, this is George Michael. BBC Radio Berkshire with George Michael and Careless Whisper. My guest in the studio today is Sarah Goddard. She's a silhouette cutter from Reading. Sarah, such a bizarre job. When people ask you what you do and you tell them, do they then say, sorry, what do you do? <laughs> 
really much. They would say, um, so you're going to bring out the screen or I think they think I'm going to do like shadow puppets or something. I, I don't know. Um, or they, they pretend that they know, you know, it's like, oh, yes, yes, I, I know what that is. And then you start to, to do it and they go, why, 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 what's the scissors? <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. It is a great job because you're literally just taking paper and scissors with you wherever you go. Pretty much, yeah. Do you I, have I particular specialist and... ones? Um, well, I do use surgical because they're very, very sharp. Um, but it always is a bit of a talking point when I come over to someone brandishing a pair of very sharp surgical scissors. Yes, <laughs> shining yeah. in the light. I've got one of your silhouettes here. I know I can't even imagine how many you've done over the years. Have you ever tried to calculate it? No. It must be thousands, tens of thousands, surely. Millions, millions and billions, probably. <laughs> it feels like it. This is gorgeous. This is a silhouette you've done of a lady. And I love... The, the tiny bit of eyelash and um, the glasses. Mm. Now, to try, it's so hard to explain. So, basically, you cut them out of black paper. Yes. So, you are effectively looking at what would be, I guess, the shadow of your profile in a, in a way, sort of. Mm -hmm. But the glasses, the way you've done it is because obviously it's black paper. You've cut out the arm and cut out the little lens bit. So, they look like they're just sitting on her nose. It's absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. What's people's reaction like when you, you cut their silhouette? Um, usually they're like, wow, kind of, yeah. And, and it's just amazing to have that um, kind of effect on, mm. on people. Um, and there's only been one case, I think, when someone's like, is that me? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't look like me. Because it's such a sort but, of elegant mm. art form that it renders anyone looking kind of noble and yeah like a, like you said like a historic figure that usually sort of thing. um mature people mm. like them because obviously there's no gray hairs there's and... no wrinkles <laughs> fantastic they're like oh you make me look 10 years younger <laughs> thank you very much yeah. nice to speak to you again <laughs> now what was your first gig like because you you in case you missed the story earlier you had gone into a shop to do maternity cover and someone asked you to cut a silhouette and you had a go and she was like, that's it. You can do this amazing. You have the gift. You have the <laughs> gift. I love that. The gift. And you ended up really quickly doing your first ever gig. Mm. So where was that and, and what did you do? Um, I think it was at the either Dorchester or the Grosvenor. Um, and we, there, there was four of us um, in the car, four silhouet artists. And uh, so it's the first time we all went together. Mm. I was so nervous. <laughs> I bet you were. And um, I, I borrowed my mum's ball gown, which was a, a beautiful 1970s vintage pink dress. And I sat in the back and they were all chatting. And I was like tiddling my fingers, you know, really nervous. And uh, we got there and I realised that my dress was actually trapped in the door. Mm. And when I got out, there's a lovely big black patch on my mum's dress. And I, I was like, oh, no. And we walked up the stairs and they had these fun pap type uh, photographers taking pictures. And I was like, no, I'm not a guest. And then we walked through the doors and we were stood waiting in, in the hall. And the next thing I know, one of these statues tapped me on the shoulder. I screamed my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can imagine it was just everything that could go wrong seemed to be going wrong. Um, I managed to go to the, the bathroom and sort myself out mm. and we all got ready and we all stood outside the door and the doors opened wide and there was thousands of people in there all sat at tables and my heart was going boom 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 i went over to one and i said hi i'm sarah i'm here doing your silhouette and the reaction that i got from those 10 people on the table that first time was just amazing they just loved it and I kind of knew that from then on that that's what I wanted to do it just seemed so natural to talk to people I didn't know and do their silhouette and get this amazing reaction was just perfect <laughs> absolutely fantastic and you went on a tour in India I did was yes was this just after first learning to do it yeah, well, um, I think I might have been doing it for a couple of years by that time. And um, I did a lot of work with the, the troupe of us all together. Um, and then I got an offer coming in to myself. I did a, a few odd jobs uh, that came in to myself, but I never realised that I could probably do it as a career move. Mm. Um, and then I had to negotiate a whole four-month tour in India 
So what were you doing? <laughs> it was um, through a South African company. Um, they wanted acts for the um, Seven Wonders of the World um, as a promotional thing for Shopper Stop, which is the Indian version of Marks and Spencers. Okay. And so um, I went to Delhi, Mumbai, Pune, Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad. I went to Kerala and Goa. For four months? For four months, brandishing my scissors. I was in the, in the shops there. And uh, I had an amazing time. I had, like, um, guides and cooks and cleaners. And I, I was really shocked, actually, when I first got there. There was um, the, the cook wanted to give me a massage. I was like, what? what's going on? <laughs> but it was amazing. And I was like a celebrity out there. People wanted to kind of say hello and shake my hands. And I was on TV out there as well. Um and then when I got back, I kind of had the courage yeah. to, to do it on my own then and uh, set up Visage Silhouette, which is now my company. And, yeah, um, kind of haven't looked back, really. It must have been a bit of a mad experience. You're in a foreign country that I guess you probably hadn't been to before. No. And you're out there for four months. Yeah. And you can't speak any Gujarat <laughs> or Hindi or anything no. like that. You see, you learn a bit. <laughs> little tiny bit a by the end of it. Yeah. What, what, what were people's reaction when you did their silhouettes? Because it's just in stores, just in yeah. clothes shops. I had queues and queues of people. <laughs> as soon as they realised that something's free as well, it's like, wow. Yes, people and, love free things in yeah. this country, let alone... They, like, just wanted me to teach and they just so wanted to learn. And um, I went to a couple of schools as well when I was out there. And I did a bit of silhouettes there, and I got them to do them. And uh, they were so lovely, really lovely people. And that must have heightened your skills as well. If you're doing them mm. all day. All day, every day, yeah. For four months. For four months, yeah. That's a lot of silhouette cutting. It is, it is. Amazing. We're going to be hearing more of your story, Sarah, including some of the famous faces who you've silhouetted, if that's the right way to <laughs> say it. it. <laughs> and um, I think you might be doing mine as well, which I'm very excited about. So, lots more to come from Sarah. Also on the way, we have got fantastic tunes, Ellie Goulding and Genesis on the way after we've caught up with the travel and the weather. Much more to come from my guest in the studio, Sarah Goddard. She's a silhouette cutter from Reading. She's going to have a go at mine while you listen to this. This is Genesis and follow you, follow me on BBC Radio Berkshire. BBC Radio Berkshire with Genesis and follow you, follow me. It is 25 to 4. Good afternoon, it's me, Suze, in for Sarah Walker. In the studio with me, and this is rather unnerving as I'm talking to you, is Sarah Goddard. She's a silhouette cutter from Reading, and I've been hearing some of her story. And as you were listening to Genesis, as was I, she has been cutting my silhouette, and it's about to be revealed. She assures me it's hugely flattering. <laughs> <laughs> no double chins in sight, so she says. We shall see. How's it going there, Sarah? I've just finished now, so... Just finishing up. Fantastic. Oh, it's got my headphones. It has. Oh, look, that's lovely. It has, that's the white copy, so you have to um, peel it off. Yes, come and sit yourself on a microphone, so I'm going to peel it off. Oh, look. That is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Becky can see it. It is absolutely gorgeous. So incredibly clever. And that took you three minutes. Yeah. I, basically, I, I get more quicker as I go. <laughs> Crazy. I just love this. And I shall keep it for a very long time. Thank you very much. This is when I wish that you could see what I can see. It looks absolutely amazing. You have got me to a T um, <laughs> with a little flick of eyelash, which is very flattering. My headphones in and everything and my rather mad unruly hair captured <laughs> just perfectly <laughs> and i was running out a bit about the sort of events you do this for you have done big parties we'll mm -hmm. find out about that in a minute but weddings increasingly mm. you're doing things for weddings and there's kind of a cult of the wedding i think at the moment people are desperate for their wedding to be different yeah. than other people's weddings so th this must be something that really does make a real difference to a wedding it does yeah i often get really nice thank you cards you know saying um what a good job i did and how everyone's still talking about their silhouettes mm. and they've got them when they gave them to each other's houses they still got them on the mantelpiece in pride of place and the nice thing is I, I just um gave you the mount card as well you can actually put a um 
special message on that mount card. So, like, thank you for coming to celebrate yeah. our day. So that's lovely. So then they get to take them home. They've yep. got a memory of the day. Yeah. And then also that you've got a copy, mm-hmm. and if you're the bride or the groom, you can you can keep a silhouette of each of your guests. Yeah, because I, I fold the paper in half, you get two copies. So one copy can go in the guest book or um, on a frame or whatever you want to do with it, really. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. I love this. Such a shame you can't see it. But maybe we can find some way of, of getting, getting Post it out. it on the website. There we go, you see. So you have also done some famous people. I have. And you did say there was only one person who said, is that me? And it was... Prince Charles. Now, there is a story behind this. You didn't suddenly have a talent failure. You you got rather nervous. I did. Um, they what had, event was it at? Uh, this is at um, St James's Palace, and it was his Christmas do. And um, a lot of these times, like, if you go through an agency, I've got a couple of agents that, that I deal with, they don't tell you what it is until you get there. Mm. Kind of maybe should have twigged at you know, St. Joseph's Palace that it might have been something. Might have been royal. Possibly. Might be some royal occasion, but um, I didn't. <laughs> I turned up and uh, basically his um, entourage, the, the guy that works for him, he's like, right, make sure you don't give him big ears. And I said, well, it's okay because, you know, I don't do ears. It's, it's, it's because a it's a profile. Yeah, it's a profile. Well, don't give him a big nose then. <laughs> and I was already petrified. <laughs> So when I went to do his, I spent far too long doing it, getting it all right. Um, but I made him look probably a bit more flattering than <laughs> I should have done. Possibly got rid of a little bit of chin. Possibly a little bit of chin. But when I gave it to him, uh, he said, he turned to his um, friend next to him, who was a beautiful lady. He said, oh, is this me? <laughs> and she went, oh. Charles, it's you at 25. Fantastic. <laughs> Were there many other royals hovering around at this party? Um, well, obviously um, his, his lovely wife, but um, not at that event. I have I've have met a lot of the royalty because I did uh, Princess Bitch's 18th birthday at Windsor Castle as well. Do you ever think this is a weird life I have? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I have to pinch myself to believe to believe it. Like so, some of the stories I don't actually bother telling people because I think, you're not going to believe me. <laughs> so you were at Windsor Castle? I was at Windsor Castle. It was amazing. And if, if they'd uh, asked me again and I knew about the job, I probably would have done it for free. I loved it so much. <laughs> Did you get to have a look at some of the bits that the public aren't necessarily allowed to go into? I think so, yes. We were in this massive massive hall and they had these beautiful paintings that were bigger than houses you know they were just amazing and just people watching the whole event was 18th century so my art really wow. fitted in well with yeah. it and we all actually had to get dressed up as well so I hired a black um uh, Victorian gown and I had my hair done and everything <laughs> for it. But some of these costumes were amazing. And uh, I did one of Demi Moore. She asked me to have uh, to have one. And while I was doing her, Prince Andrew came up behind me and said... <laughs> I was like, I mean, you probably won't believe me. Keep going. He said, he said oh, that's rather good. I know. So I was just like, I couldn't even turn around. I was, so, I was like... A bunny in the headlights then but no it was amazing that's amazing and they had some really interesting characters because they had kelly osborne as well mm. and jack osborne and they were like as they are in real life just back chatting um which is quite funny and um and then they had the philharmonic orchestra <laughs> <laughs> they know how to party they do and then they had these massive um screens either side showing a video clip of how of Pe- beatrice as she's growing up which kind of, to me, it made it seem more like they're just normal people, mm. really. And there was a, a clip where Sarah Ferguson pushed a bit just in the pool. <laughs> and so, yeah, they're just having a laugh and it's really lovely. So really, you never know who's going to book you, do you? You don't, no. I mean, I don't I do not do these things every week, <laughs> you know, like Rich and Famous every week. Um uh, You're not hanging with Demi Moore and no, all no. of the time. I, I, to be honest, I just don't don't take her phone calls anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, um, but I have been very, very like fortunate to to go to some nice places. You got to do Lenny Henry and Dawn French as well. I did. Yes. Oh, I, I bet Dawn. Dawn's lovely. Isn't oh, she? she's absolutely gorgeous. I just knew it. I knew mm. she did. She like her silhouette. She did. Yeah. Um, I met her actually in Henley, and uh, she remembered me. And when they moved to Cornwall, um, she had a. Uh, 
birthday party and uh, invited me down to cut sweat so I guess and again that was an amazing party because I felt like I knew everyone they had all their comedians there so I was like yeah I know you and I know you <laughs> so, so who I was there? didn't know them in person as you know but they just had this lovely vibe to them um oh goodness who was there uh Vic Reeves and Jules Holland um uh obviously Jennifer Saunders and um Ben Elton and massive British celebrities basically yeah yeah there's loads of comedians um Joe Brand and fantastic it's just so hard to come up with something original and new these days mm. so I just think it's a fantastic thing that you do now that you have been doing it for a while do you think you've got better do you think better than you used to be um yes um I guess I I kind of do improve all the time even now, I kind of like to try to challenge myself and push myself and, mm. and like, do more things with it. Um, I actually would quite like to do um, a children's book, even. Uh, In silhouettes? Yeah, that would think it'd be quite nice, because I've got a little one as well now. Um, I kind of think there's so many different ways you I can do silhouettes, Um you do full length ones. Well, I do full length you? ones, yeah. Uh, it's quite nice of the wedding couple, actually. I do a full length one of them as well. Um, it doesn't they, have to be photoshopped because there's no wrinkles. No, exactly. <laughs> the lot, lot of detail goes into it. So, what I do is I take a photograph on the day of the wedding because the last thing you want to do is stand around and pose for yeah. ages. So, I take a photograph and I do it in the studio afterwards. And then you send it to them. And then I send it to them with a little certificate as well. Oh. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming My in, pleasure. Sarah. It's been fascinating. I shall trust this. <laughs> Sarah Goddard, who does a job. How many people in the UK do? About six. About roughly. six people. <laughs> She's a silhouette cutter. Absolutely fascinating stuff. This is Ellie Goulding and your song here on BBC Radio Berkshire. <laughs> 